Hey guys, and welcome back to another video of Real Time Sports. And today we're going to be covering the history of the Arizona Cardinals. Let's get into it. The Chicago Cardinals era. This series will be divided into three parts, considering the different eras in which the Cardinals have been in. The first part will be the Chicago Cardinals which was the first era. The, the Arizona Cardinals were once called the Chicago Cardinals. Before this, though, they were called the Morgan Athletic Club. This was founded in 1898 by Chris O'Brien, who owned the team until 1929. He later, he later moved the team to Chicago's Normal Park and came in the same year and renamed them to Racine Normals because of the geographic location of Normal Park on Racine Avenue in Chicago. In 1901, he bought uniforms from the University of Chicago that were maroon red. He later quoted, saying, that's not maroon, that's cardinal red. Th because of this inspiration, he later renamed the team the Chicago Cardinals. The original Racine Street Cardinals were disbanded in 1906 due to a lack of competition. A professional team under the same team name was formed in 1913, claiming the previous team as their history. Then the team was forced to suspend operations in 1918, like many other teams, due to World War I and the Spanish flu pandemic. They resumed operations a year later in 1919, and was one of the few teams that actually played during that time. They have since operated continuously. The 1920s. At the time of the founding of the National Football League, the Cardinals were part of a thriving professional circuit with teams such as the Decatur Staley's, the Hammond Pros, the, um, the Chicago Tigers, and the Chicago Cardinals. The team had formed an informal loop similar to ones found in Ohio and New York. What's up? which also emerged as the league's center before the formation of it. In 1920, the team became a charter member of the American Professional Football Association, which was later renamed the National Football League in 1922. The cost of entry to the league was $100 and called a franchise fee. The Cardinals and the Chicago Bears were on the former, which was the former Decatur Staley's, are the only charter member of the NFL that's still in existence. Though the Green Bay Packers joined the league in 1921, which was prior to the formation of the league. The story goes that the person who was responsible for recording the minutes of the league's first meeting mistakenly, mistakenly recorded the Cardinals from Racine, Wisconsin. This The team was renamed after a team from the real, real Racine in Wisconsin entered the league. That season, the Cardinals moved, in, moved to Kaminsky Park. Skip skipping ahead to the year 1928 was when was when uh when the Cardinals were one of the first two teams to host African American players in the 1920s, most notably Duke Slater. After folding of the first American Football League, Slater, against all odds, made it on the roster of the Chicago Cardinals. Not only Slater was the first Amer African American lineman, he was also one of the NML's most outstanding linemen of his era. In 1928, he encouraged the team to sign a fellow African-American by the name of Harold Bradley, Harold Bradley, who became the NFL's second African-American lineman. This caused Bradley to end his career after two games, the shortest among 13 African-Americans before he ended. He ended his career because of a childhood injury that resulted in a steel plate that aggravated his leg. Between 1926 and 1927, the NFL transitioned to the racist model of the MLB of banning African-American players. The sole exception to this was, was none other than Duke Slater. The ban facing Slater and other African-Americans was not ironclad. However, the, however, and four other African-Americans managed to draw salaries in the NFL during their short careers from 1928 through 1933. Slater was once again the only black player in the NFL in 1929. On November 28, 1928, Slater participated in an NFL record as a lineman in front of Ernie Nevers, in which he scored six rushing touchdowns in a 40-6 victory over the Chicago Bears. Slater played all 60 minutes of the contest, altering between offensive and defensive lines, as well as participating on special teams. By the time of his retirement in 1931, Slater had achieved all-pro status a total of six times, 
During his NFL career, Slater never missed a game due to to injury and started a total of 96 of his 99-game career between the AFL and the NFL. In 1930s, the Cardinals posted a winning record only twice after the 20s, 20 years after the 1925 championship, which included 10 straight losing seasons from 1936 to 1945. Dr. David Jones bought the team from O'Brien in 1929. In 1932, the team was purchased by Charles Bidwell, then a, then a vice president for the Chicago Bears. The team has been under the Bidwell family ownership ever since. In 1944, to the player shortage brought on by World War II, the Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Steelers merged for one year car- were and were known as the Card Pit, or were intentionally called Carpets, as they were winless that season. In 1945, the Cardinals snapped their long losing streak in NFL record 29 games, dating back to 1942 season, including their lone season as Card Pit, by beating the Bears 16-7. It was their only victory of the season. In 1946, the team finished 6-5 and five for the first winning season in eight years. In 1947, the NFL standardized on a 12-game regular season. This would be the most celebrated year in their history as they went 9-3, and three, beating the Philadelphia Eagles in their championship. This was mostly credited to their million-dollar backfield, which included quarterback, which included quarterback Paul Chrisman, halfback Charlie Tippy, Trippy, halfback Elmer Angsman, and fullback Pat Harder, piling up 282 rushing yards. However, Bidwell was not around to see it. He had died before the start of the season, leaving his wife, Violet. Prior to the season, he had beaten out the Chicago Rockets from the All-American Football Conference to the right, a trippy. This signing is generally guarded as the final piece to the championship puzzle. The next season, the Cardinals finished 11-1 and lost 7-0 to the rematch against the Eagles, which is almost a wide-out game which saw the field almost invisible to the spectators watching, which was the first televised championship game. The next year, Violet Bidwell married a St. Louis business name named Walter Wolfner and fell to 6-5-1. and one. The 1950s were a dismal period for the organization, with records of 5-7, nine, 3-9, 4-8, 1-10-1, 2-10, 4-7-1, 7-5, which was the best record of the period, 3 and 9, 2 9 and 1, and 2 and 10. These records lasted from 1950 to 1959. With its 33 wins in 10 seasons, the organization looked for destinations other than Chicago. The Cardinals were soon forgotten in Chicago, overshadowed by the Bears. Attendance was sparse, and soon the prospects of relocation were brought up. The NFL demanded a hefty fee for relocation, which Bidwell was either unwilling or unable to pay. Needing cash, the Bidwells took offers from various out of town investors, including Lamar Hunt, Bud Adams, Bob Howsam, and Max Winter. However, these negotiations led to nothing, partially because Bidwells were unwilling to sell a majority of the team and kept se- to selling minor- minority stakes. Having failed their separate efforts to buy the team, Hunt, Howsam, and Winter joined forces to form the American Football League. Suddenly, faced a serious rival, the NFL came to an agreement with the Bidwells, a deal that might allow them to move to St. Louis which also blocked the city as a location for the AFL, which starts the same year. Despite the presence of a professional football team, the St. Louis Cardinals, the team, this professional baseball team, the St. Louis Cardinals kept its name. The team was commonly known as the Football Cardinals until the team departed in 1987, which starts the Saint, which starts the Phoenix era. Thank you for watching, and... The next episode will be about the St. Louis era, and the episode of that will be the Phoenix or Arizona era of the Cardinals. Thank you for watching, and 